Welcome to the video guys, my name is Pushpinder Gill. Uh, so in this video over here, uh, we're going to be talking about the assumptions uh, that underlie the method of least squares. You know, what are the assumptions? What do we assume? So it's very, very important, these assumptions. So uh, there, there are seven assumptions which we're going to discuss in this video. Uh, let's go by one by one. You know, the first assumption that we do is that the model that we have is always a linear uh, regression model, right? So the first assumption is that the model is always linear regression model. So when I say linear, uh, it's always linear in parameters, right? Uh, it may or may not be linear in terms of variables, but it's always linear in parameters. So, for example, yi is equal to alpha hat plus beta hat into xi. You know, that's a linear model. Or I can also have my model to be, uh, you know, not linear in terms of variables, but like linear in terms of parameters. I can have y to be equal to alpha hat plus beta hat into xi squared. You know, there's, there's no problem here. As long as these terms are linear, you know, the parameters are linear, uh, you know, this has nothing to do with uh, my variable because I can always replace this with a, you know, with a simple variable, let's suppose pi, you know, I can always replace it and I can say that pi is equal to xi squared. So the model has to be linear in terms of xi. So generally the model is yi is equal to alpha hat plus beta hat plus the error term into xi. So this is the model that we generally use, right? So that was the first assumption here. Let's look at the second assumption. Uh, the second assumption is that uh, the values of x are independent of the error term. So the values of x are independent of the error term. That means there is no relationship between x and the error term, right? So this this something this sometimes can happen. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, let's suppose if I want to calculate, uh, if I want to say that uh, I want to find the relationship between the wage level uh, with respect to the education, right? So, uh, I represent this as Y and I represent this as X and I say Y is equal to alpha hat plus beta hat into X uh, plus the error term, right? So, right now I'm considering that there is only one parameter that affects education, you know, that is the wage level. But what if there is some other parameter that, that affects the education? That can very well be a person's, uh, you know, a, a, a person's wage level, I'm sorry. Or let's suppose education. Uh, that can very well be his IQ level or there are various other parameters that can hamper this relationship, which are actually part of the error term, which would, at the end of the day, would be related to X, right? So, so this error term, uh, you know, would, would hamper your wage level because you know IQ level and all these things can actually hamper your wage level. So there would be a certain relationship between the error term and X and I can say this is something which is not happening when I'm assuming the linear model. Right? Uh, so this is, is about this, uh, this assumption here that X is independent of the error term. And the next thing, the next assumption, that is the third assumption, is it's it's by name of the zero mean value of the disturbance term. So or the error term, right? So I want to say here is mathematically what I want to say is is that the expected value of ui with respect to xi is supposed to be zero, right? Or if s if if, if x over here is uh, you know non-stochastic. Uh, then the expected value of ui is supposed to be zero, right? Uh, if I want to talk uh, talk in general terms or in a layman term, uh, I would say that the error term when added up together will always end to zero. That means the deviation on the negative side would be always equal to the deviation on the positive side. So if I am, let's suppose, you know, this is my progression function. If there is an error term here, uh, and it gives a positive D deviation, there has to be an error term somewhere here, which is going to give a negative deviation. So every error term is going to have a negative of it, or, you know, the sum of them would be negative. But I can say that the expected value of the error term is always going to be equal to zero. Right? 
so this is an uh, uh, you know the third assumption which says that zero mean value of the disturbance term is always going to be zero now if this assumption is not met uh, then we are supposed to say that a linear function uh, that uh, there is a specification error in our linear function or a specification error in our method of least square so we're going to discuss more on specification error in our later videos uh, so right now, you know, what we need to do is we just need to understand the assumptions that underlie our, uh, uh, you know, that underlie our uh, method of least squares. The next and the fourth assumption is there, which is of homoscedasticity, right? So the next assumption is called uh, homoscedasticity. Now, what do you mean by homoscedasticity? It says that it says that the variance of the error term uh, is same with irregardless of the value of uh, you know regardless of the value of x you know the x and the error term uh, you know the variance of the error term it says that the variance of the error term has nothing to do with x or mathematically if i want to say that uh, i'm sorry it, it wants to say that that the variance of the error term uh, is going to be equal to uh, the variance of the error term is going to be equal to a constant. Uh, it is not going to vary with y, right? So let's suppose if I draw my, uh, you know, uh, the, the function over here. Uh, so the variance of x term. So let's suppose, uh, you know, this, uh, this over here, uh, the, the variance of the error term, the spread of the error terms from this is going to be constant, right? So they are not going to increase with the value of x. Right, so they're not going to be a function of x at all. They are going to be the same way. You know, they, they, the, 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 the difference is going to be the same. Uh, that means it says that the variance of the error term is not a function of x. Right, not a function of x. That's what it wants to say over here. Uh, basically, it wants to say that the variance of the error term is a constant, and they denote this constant uh, by this expression over here. And this is the assumption of uh, homoscedasticity where uh, the word homo means equal and the word scedasticity means equal variance, right? So, you know, it, it, it represents spread or variance. So that means it represents equal variance throughout. We're going to be doing a lot more on, you know, homo scedasticity when we do uh, this in detail, right? So right now, this is what it means. Uh, that homo scedasticity means that the variance of the error term is going to be a, a constant and is not going to vary with respect to x. Uh, the next assumption is the fifth assumption, uh, which says that uh, there is no correlation. There is no correlation between two error terms. So there is no correlation uh, between two error terms. So you know, I've just got the value of correlation wrong. So that is correlation. There's no correlation between two error terms, any two error terms. You know, that's uh, what it wants to say. Uh, so let's suppose if I say there are two error terms, that is u and j. Uh, so the question says that, that the covariance, so the assumption says that the covariance of ui uh, and uj is actually equal to zero, right? Uh, so this is something that is equal to zero. So this is the assumption of autocorrelation, right? Uh, it says that there is no autocorrelation. So I'm just going to write a no at the front here. There is no autocorrelation between the error terms, you know, where, uh, you know, i and j uh, represent different, uh, you know, different uh, values. You can even call it ui and uj, which actually I have called it here. Uh, so, you know, basically what I want to say is that the error terms are spread independently, right? So they are, they are not uh, correlated at all. Let's say if I want to use an example here, let's suppose uh, these are, uh, you know, I, I would represent two error terms, that is u of i and u of j on, on a graph and, uh, you know, I kind of put this up on a graph and I get the graphs to be something like this. This represents a positive correlation. This represents a negative correlation. And uh, this over here is going to represent no correlation. So that's what it means. This is what he's trying to say, that is, there is no correlation between uh, the error terms. You know, this is something, again, we're going to be discussing in detail later on. Now, the next assumption is that, that the number of observations, uh, that is n, must be greater 
than the number of parameters to be estimated. So this must be greater than the number of uh, parameters that should be estimated in the linear regression, right? Fine. So the number of observations must be greater than the number of parameters to be estimated because that kind of makes sense because uh, you know your observations numbers have to be very large for you to even go ahead and let's suppose if I say uh, there is just one as a, there is just one uh, out of thousand students in a college I just pick up the data of one student with the data of one student I won't be able to uh, formulate the expression of yi to be equal to alpha hat plus beta hat into xi. I will not be able to get these values if I just get one student because I have to estimate two parameters and I've just calculated, I've just gotten one, uh, one observation here. So the number of observations have to be greater than the number of parameters estimated in my uh, linear function there. Now, the, the last assumption says that, that the variance of x have to be positive, right? So, when it has to be positive, it means that all x values, all the x values cannot be same, right? So, they should not be same. That's what it means. It, it actually means that the variance of x is, is, is always a positive number, uh, right? So, Plus one more thing is that you know you know there, if if you kind of go from here as well that there cannot be uh, there, there should not be any outliers to the value of x. When I say outliers, I mean there should not be values there should not be values that are very large in relation to the rest of the observations. There should not be values which are very large as well, right? So uh, you know that is again an assumption that we are making. There should not be uh, there is one value of x you know, x here and there is one value of x white at the infinity here. That is not, you know, that should not happen. You know, all the x values, all the x values, you know, should be kind of in close proximity to each other. Uh, and, uh, and the variance of x have to be positive. All the x values cannot be same also, right? So you cannot have a linear function just like this. You need to have a line which has a good intercept and a slope and everything. Right. Uh, so that's what the se seventh and the final assumption of uh, the least square estimators is. Right. So you know that kind of uh, sums it up. Uh, now that this kind of brings us to a uh, dilemma here. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to write down. Uh, you know, a problem here is. You know, this kind of brings us to a dilemma is how real are these observations? Uh, how? You know, I've given you seven seven assumptions here. How can you control all this in your experiment? You're definitely bound to make errors, right? You definitely, uh, sometimes autocorrelation tends to exist. Sometimes there is homos Uh You know, there, 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 there would be a lot of things happening in your experiment. So which is why we, uh, we need to consider, uh, you know, standard errors that we are supposed to make in our least square estimators in the next video. We're going to be discussing about the standard errors that, you know, we're going to be estimating the errors uh, that we would be making in our, uh, you know, we'll be making in our estimation of at least square estimators. So I suppose you're understanding what I'm trying to say here, guys. Uh, see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching this video. Make sure uh, that, you know, you communicate with us. Give us your valuable feedback. So this would be about the video. Thank you very much and I'll see you.